qualities truly make a man sexy and attractive? The answer may surprise you and no, it's not being six feet, having raging abs or being super rich, so bear with me. I've asked various women what they truly look for and they've all said something that really surprised me and it's not being athletic, tall, or rich. One trait that seems to have the potential to trump all the other qualities I just listed is your masculinity. Women often say I fell for him because he makes me feel like a woman. So when you're able to embrace your healthy masculine identity, that's when a woman can truly feel like a woman around you. <laughs> that is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Ooh, so you asked a whole bunch of modern women to tell the truth, huh? Well, then what they said must be true. If only we didn't have tens of thousands of hours worth of testimonials from modern women to tell the entire planet exactly what they want in a man. Yeah, if only. And that's because money, height, and physical build are intrinsically tied to displaying a man's masculinity. We hear it all of the time. Modern women are constantly complaining about how they have to be masculine and they need a man who's more masculine than her so she can be feminine. This means a man must make more money than her in order for her to feel submissive. A man must be taller than her so she can feel feminine and safe, and that guy must be built like a Spartan god so she can feel desired and sexy and feminine. It all goes together. But to be fair, this only applies to Chadson Jackson. Any other average man who's confident in his masculinity is just another toxic, narcissist, dusty creeper who supports the patriarchy. It's an exclusive club whose membership is solely determined by modern women, and you've made it abundantly clear. If he's not a tall, rich, handsome, athletic man, then he is not a man. And if that answer shocks you, then I kind of pity you. Your intellect is as weak as your dollar. Failure is your destiny. You disrespect yourself and your nation. You are made of stupid. Here's an interesting fact. The majority of affairs go completely undiscovered, which means that the majority of affairs begin and end before they are ever known about, which means that we won't ever really know about most affairs that go on right underneath our nose. I, I quit. I quit. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> Anybody else remember a time when trust and loyalty were sacred in relationships? Well, thanks to the advent of the internet and the promotion of human stupidity, it seems like hedonism, promiscuity, and just a downright lack of respect for people in general has led to a rise in this terrible behavior. The reasons are obvious if you own a condo on Tinfoil Lane like I do. It's all just a means of destroying the nuclear family in an attempt to control the next few generations and to send everything into a world where a cabal of billionaires control the entire planet in Minecraft. It's all about Minecraft. People get into all sorts of strange on Minecraft, but nostalgia bait games aside, the fact that affairs go unnoticed is about as sad as it is unsurprising. Modern women are encouraged to go out and have as much fun as they can, no matter the cost of the physical or mental health of themselves or the people they swear loyalty to. And only when they're caught do they start to regret things. But what do you expect from a world that thinks Netflix series are a substitute for the actual documentation of legitimate history? Sometimes it makes you just want to let it all burn, you know? In our friendships, in marriages we know, with people we know, with that person at the grocery store, with that neighbor down the street, the majority of affairs go undetected. It is the minority that are actually revealed and discovered. Ah, it's nothing to be proud of, Rusty. Well, woman, if your goal was to increase the paranoia of the people around you, then mission friggin' accomplished, but that's only if it was your goal. Personally, I don't know what that could possibly be. Are you trying to tell men that their spouses are cheating on them? Or are you trying to tell women that if she does have an affair, she most likely won't get caught? Or are you trying to tell men and women to hate each other more than they already do? I mean, I have no clue here. 
Maybe you're an alien spy who's broadcasting secret message to your home base, which is located on the dark side of the moon. That's just as plausible. Maybe it's a secretly coded message telling the lizard people that you remain undetected in the world of humans and that you're currently cheating on your significant other for the good of the alien lizard race. I don't know. Maybe you're just talking to hear yourself talk. I do that a lot, but at least when I do it, on occasion I'm at least accidentally funny. When you do it, it's just completely pointless. So I'm going to kindly suggest that you just stop talking about affairs for a while until you get your affairs in order. According to you, it shouldn't be that difficult. Nobody knows about them. I know I don't. I apologize, I forgot you were there. You may go now. This is the day my life as an OnlyFans creator. So I start off by playing with my dogs, and then I make my bed. Then I brush my teeth, wash my face, do my makeup, brush my hair, and get dressed for the day. Then I take care of my dogs, eat breakfast, and now I'm making TikTok. Then I went and got my nails done today. And I also went grocery shopping. I checked my mail and I also got my truck wash. When I got home, I took care of my dogs and then I went and got my lashes done. And that's all I did. Boring. I see, so your life is completely boring and pointless and the only thing you have going for you is your dogs and your spice mining. Well, good for you. I wish you good fortune in your future life failures. So in response, I'm just gonna talk about a day in the life of an intergalactic space bounty hunter. First thing I do is wake up, then I get out of bed, and then make my bed, and then eat a reconstituted breakfast of reprocessed meal food. Then I drink my coffee, and, and I say my daily benedictions to the intergalactic space god Quom Lafard, all hail. And once I realize I am once again not the jerk who brought forth intergalactic space Armageddon, I take to the Space Police Force Bounty Board to look for my daily bread. And once I find an out of shape tax cheat, I set a course for the nearest system, and then I sit for about, I don't know, eight hours as my cruiser reaches the plotted destination. And in those eight hours, I check out some of your Earth's internet, which I have free access to thanks to intergalactic space video pirates. And then I just kind of hang out and try to think of some awesome one-liners to use as I make my apprehension of the intergalactic space fugitive from cosmic justice. I gotta say though, I've been lacking in that department. My last one was just downright terrible. This guy I hadn't filed a space tax claim for his unearned income in about 10 years, and all I could think of was, time to pay the piper, you dork. I don't know, my head wasn't on straight that day, and I was kind of tired. But anyway, after turning in my perp and filing the, the appropriate forms, I take my bounty, eat a light lunch, and then get back to YouTube to make videos to entertain all of you fine men. Is it the most exciting life? Probably not, but at least it's more fulfilling than your typical thought. And for that, I can't help but thank the intergalactic space god Flopliflar for the opportunity. All hail! You boring! You fucking dull! You have nothing to say! You are a one hived mind twat waffle! Dating in. Let's unpack this bad boy together. Hey, I'm Star Monroe, psychotherapist turned your midlife dating bestie. Old. Old? Old. Yes, I'm actively out there dating. Yes, I'm loving dating. I see it as a real vehicle for my personal growth to help me grow in confidence, boldness, to get clearer on what, who I am, what I want. I love it and I want you to feel the same. So a while back I shared three of my top concepts and I'm gonna unpack the third one with you today. And that is, it's all about when I change changed this, everything changed. Everything changed, as my voice goes really high. So I took off the word dating, I'm actively dating, and I replaced it with, I'm here to meet people. <laughs> and... <laughs> You know what, gentlemen and gents, I'm gonna admit something here. It's rather refreshing to see a middle-aged, out of shape, loud mouth crone finally admit the truth to what she's doing. She's being honest and she's not dating. She's just going out and looking to meet dudes for what I can only assume is free surf and turf and maybe some bedroom fun if they're feeling a little desperate. I mean, if we're being perfectly honest, that's all modern dating is nowadays. 
It's just most people aimlessly walking the earth, meeting people and using them for resources and the age old pastime of time wasting. So I will give props to this lady for not only admitting a half truth, but she does it with such passion and gusto that I can't help but say good for you lady. You're one of the first crones in quite some time to be honest about your intentions and not complaining about it. And even though that particular bar is set fairly low, it's still nice to see that there's still women out there who are willing to be open about their intentions. So good on you, sweetheart. Here's a celebratory gesture just for you. Congratulations! Because what I realized is that I hold a lot of conditioning around the word dating and dating is not the same as it used to be. And it's... I need to change. I'm the one who has to shift and change and grow to be able to manage what is out there, who is out there. So when I changed the word dating to meeting, it took a lot of the pressure off. And one thing I know that women do is put a lot of pressure on themselves. And when we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, what starts to happen is our fun, playful, flirty side just crumbles up inside. And we need our fun, flirty, playful side when we're out there meeting people. No offense, but it sounds like that's some fucking commie gobbledygook. You no, know, it doesn't take an expert to tell that this broad is going through a midlife crisis. Even if she was trying to hide it, that god-awful tattoo on her arm is just a dead giveaway. Here's a woman who's going out there to have as much fun as humanly possible because she needs to feel young and alive again. And the only way for her to do that is to get with as many men as humanly possible and use them for any form of entertainment that she can. That's why she refuses to call it dating. It isn't dating. She's just trying to get as much out of people as she can before she croaks. And it's all about her feelings and her inability to accept the fact that she's old. She can't accept that her best years are far behind her, and the best she can hope for is some regular stank factory time with a dude who's not interested in a committed relationship to a woman, who thinks feeling young and alive is to pay perfectly good money to have ink permanently injected into her skin. Seriously, I have no idea why modern women think this is a smart idea. Some tattoos are cool looking, sure, but most modern tattoos remind me too much of these broads. They're devoid of any personal meaning, they cost way too much, and they reek of psychological damage. Huh. Maybe that's why modern women love them so much. So if you remember back, I talked about the concept that there is not, there's not the one, there are the ones. There's lots of ones. So you put these two together and when you get into your head, oh, I'm out here meeting people, it does take a lot of pressure off. You can have a lot more fun around it. And in the process of this, guess what you're doing? You're cultivating the skill of being able to communicate to lots of different people. Find out the ways that you like to communicate. Find out your boundaries within, especially online dating. You've got to know your boundaries when you're online dating. Oh my God, if you don't, then somebody else's boundaries are going to ramroad you and you end up being morphed into that. Ugh, messy. I'll talk about boundaries again soon. Um, and the thing is, as well, you get really good at weeding out the dregs because there's lots of dregs out there. So try it on, replace dating with meeting people. Any questions, any comments, drop them below. I'm here to serve. <laughs> Sister, have you ever considered the reason why you're running into a lot of dregs? Maybe it's because you attract what you are. Think about it. You're out there just looking for fun. That's it. You're thinking that you have options and that's making you grow as a person, but what exactly is it doing? You're clearly not a great communicator. You've clearly regressed as a person. You haven't gone anywhere with life. You're just meeting dudes. That's it. Now, you claim that there are multiple quote-unquote ones out there in life, which within itself doesn't make any sense. Because if there are multiple ones, then they wouldn't be ones. They're just people who are more compatible than others. That doesn't make them a true love. It just means that they pair nicely with you. But you're not looking for the one. Even if you were, it doesn't matter. That one is not looking for you. You're too far gone the deep end that any man who sees you may think you're good for a few rounds in the bedroom, but if it's anything else, then I couldn't imagine what. No man wants to deal with that kind of a headache. And that's the exact reason why dating coaches are nothing but a bunch of life failures who will forever remain single. Oh!
And that's going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave a couple of comments, and maybe share this video so we can give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.